has such a wide range of customers, how can you serve the needs of everyone with one technology? Well, we're a platform company, and so we're able to leverage that capability with 350 million profiled names, and we have a repeatable model. Uh, we are, last year, grew over 70% top line. We're very profitable. We have about 700 people, and this is a company that is at the stage of rapid scaling. How, how are you going to be able to stand out in the world of ad tech? I mean, there's so many other companies, and there's so many other companies of great data scientists, and the march of advertising innovation continues forward. So we're, just to jump in, we're a data and analytics company, not an ad tech company. I think the big difference between us and a lot of the companies we compete with, we compete with a few small guys like IBM, Oracle, Salesforce. <laughs> we focus on the entire customer life cycle versus just focusing on CRM, which is what most of our competitors do. So we help very large enterprises combine their CRM data into our marketing cloud and build an analytical breakdown of who their best customers are. And then we go help them find them at dramatic cost savings to where they would other invest to create customers. Whereas most companies just focus on that CRM component, we do acquisition, CRM, and monetization of customers for large enterprises. So, John, you've led two advertising powerhouses, Pepsi and Apple, and I think about the Pepsi Taste Challenge, Apple's 1984 ad, and I wonder, with big data, everything is becoming more and more targeted because you have more and more information about consumers, and I wonder how that impacts creativity in advertising. Would a shocking campaign like 1984 still be possible today? I don't think it would be the place you'd want to put your best talent. Uh, those campaigns were designed in a different era when everything was about experience marketing and you had a, a lot of audience and you had a lot of time, 60 seconds was a long time. We don't have that anymore. We have people who only give us maybe 10 seconds of attention and so we're in the attention economy and you have to look at the way that people see media and today they'll more likely see it on their mobile device so a campaign like we did back in 1984 or even Pepsi Challenge before that uh, just wouldn't be the kind of campaign that, that I would be leading in this era. It would be much more of the so kind of things of the we see in, in data analytics. But, but so much of the advertising is going to video. I mean, creativity actually becomes even more important as we move from, from banner ads to, to video advertising. Well, yes. But you also have to make sure that the people who are seeing the video are the ones who are the most apt to want to buy the product and want to view the video. So the, you can look at how it's compiled, and creativity is always going to be an important component of marketing. Uh, we, we fully believe that. But we believe that spending to reach a massive audience when you could get much more focused and much tighter and get to the people who are not just have the highest aptitude to purchase your product, but the highest aptitude to replicate your best customers. So you're adding customers, but your highest revenue, highest value customers by targeting down that marketing and that creative. I think that's exactly right. I think that uh, what we're seeing today is that we can use predictive analytics to know a lot about the people that we're targeting, as David pointed out, and we have a very short attention span with the customers today, so right. you want to be able to focus on things you think they're going to be most interested in.